tonight I want to talk to us about walking in the Spirit of God and trusting Him in what He calls us to do. And I want to use a story that is uh, hopefully familiar uh, to all of us. It's the story of Moses. And it's going to be hopefully a part that maybe isn't focused on so much. So God called Moses uh, to serve him by serving others. Being the one called and chosen to be a deliverer to the people of Israel, to deliver them from their bondage and their afflictions. And I think it's something that maybe we can all relate to. Who, who here has felt the calling, the prompting of God and his spirit to do something? How many here have questioned that prompting or that calling? Okay. And so it's often not the calling, but it's our abilities that we call into question. Right? Much like Moses, God calls to him out of the bush and says, I want you to go deliver the people. Moses really didn't question the Lord's ability to deliver his people, right? It was, who am I? What am I going to do? I can't talk. I can't do this. I can't, right? This whole laundry list of excuses of why he couldn't do it. And I relate to that so many times when the Lord says, I want you to do this. Well, who am I? What, what can I do? What? I have all of these uh, deficiencies and insufficiencies, and God kind of speaks to him and reinforces the message that he's given since the garden. You can trace it all the way back to that. If we just trust him, if we're obedient to what he asks of us, that he will be with us and that we will be blessed. And so in Exodus, the, the third chapter, the 12th verse, this is God responding to Moses. God said, certainly I will be with you, and this shall be a token unto you that I have sent you. When you have brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mountain. So Moses puts his faith in God, you know, a little back and forth, but goes to work to accomplish the task. And we know the story, right? What happens? The plagues, the deliverance, the Red Sea, right? We know all of that story, and we're not going to focus uh, on that tonight. But God's purpose was that he would begin to do the fu fulfill the word that he gave to Abraham, that he would bless his seed, that he would give them a land of promise, and that they would be his people and that he would be their God. You shall serve God on this mountain. Okay, so fast forward through the plagues, the Red Sea, and all that stuff. We get to, right, 3 6, the full circle. They're back to the base of the mountain where God said, You're going to come back here when you're done. And this is what they experienced. This is in Exodus 20. It says, The people saw the thunder and the lightning, and the noise of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking. All right, so just picture in your mind, lightning and thunder, the, the mountain on fire, all of this smoke, all of these things going on. And it says, when they saw it, they stood far off. And essentially said to Moses, you go. You go up, you talk to God, and whatever God tells you, we'll do it. But we don't want to go up there. Moses is like, this is the whole point. This is what everything has been leading to. That we would come here, that you would go up the mountain, that you would serve God, that you would experience the same thing that I experienced, that you would meet God, that you would dwell in his presence. No, you go, you do it, you let us know how that goes. We can't allow other people to be our spiritual connection to the Lord. The Lord wants to meet with us. 
face to face. As a brother, as a sister, as a friend. He doesn't want us to be, well, let me tell you what he said. It's not how God wants to work with us. How God wants to work with you. He wants one-on-one -on -one connection. He pleaded with the people. Moses pleaded with them, come up. In Isaiah, God says about his ways and his thoughts are what? Higher than ours. It is always the desire of God to have us come up. To have us come up to meet him, to dwell with him. But so often, that's a hard task for us, right? It's hard to operate that way. And so God has to come down to us. God wanted the children of Israel to come up the mountain to meet him. They wouldn't do it. So God, plan B or plan A, however you look at it, says, I want you to build a tent. I want you to build a tabernacle where I can come and I can dwell. So they built it and he came down and his presence and his glory that appeared on that mountaintop came and resided in that tabernacle. And it traveled with them from that, that time on. And that glory and his presence would be with them through the wilderness, would be with them every day, would be with them in their journeys. When you go forward through time, and in the beginning of John, it says this about how God came down to us. It says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And that means that every day, we get to dwell with the glory of God. We all know that life is a series of ups and downs, right? We're, we're all on this kind of ride, right? Ups and downs of circumstances, the ups and downs of our emotions, of our health, of our job, right? Life is filled with just this motion. But in Jesus Christ, the up has come down. Heaven has come to earth. The mountaintop has come to the valley. Even in the lowest places of our lives, even in the darkest valleys, we can draw near to the presence of God and we can dwell with the glory of the Lord like we were on the mountaintop because he is inside of us. Moses, at the end of his ministry, climbed up Mount Nebo, placed his hands on Joshua, and passed that mantle, passed that authority. And the Spirit fell on Joshua, and he led the people from there on out. Elijah, the end of his ministry, how was he taken away? How we all probably wish we were, right? Whisked away to heaven. And when he was, what happened to his mantle? It says it fell on the ground. Stay there. Elisha picked it up. And the spirit of Elijah fell on it. See a pattern? What happened at the end of Christ's ministry here on this earth? As with Moses, he ascended up the mountain to the cross. As with Elijah, he ascended to heaven. As with both of them, his disciples stood and they watched. Where then did his mantle fall? Who picked it up? The mantle, the calling of Jesus is too big for any one person. It can never fall on just one disciple, but falls on all of us. The Spirit of God fell on his disciples at the day of Pentecost. His mantle was given to all of them, to all of us. 
And our calling and our ministry is found in Jesus Christ. And if we have part in him, we also have part in his anointing. Because every calling that God gives to the children of men, he anoints and he provides a way. Always has. From Noah to Abraham to Moses to David to Nephi and on and on and on. You can read about how God provided, how God gave the anointing to the calling. Today, we, like Jesus Christ, are called to preach the good tidings to the meek. We are sent to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of prison to them that are bound, to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked. That's our ministry. If we have part with Jesus Christ, it can happen on a park bench, like Brother Chuck told us about today. It can happen on an airplane, like I heard Brother Paul Palmieri testify. He was on a plane at a specific moment for a reason. Brother Josh Daly can tell you the very same experience. It can happen like it happened to me last year, laying in a hospital bed. There at that moment, to pray for people in the next room, that they would be healed. And to watch God do it, time after time after time. One thing is for certain. It will never happen if we don't walk in His Spirit. It will never happen if we don't walk in His Spirit. Do you know how we walk in His Spirit? We talked about it today in our discussion. Love the Lord with all of your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your soul. If we do that, we can't help but be connected to His Spirit. We can't help but to have His Spirit work within us, to guide us, to prompt us. We can't help but have the power of His Spirit work on us in our lives. He has come down to dwell with you and in you. Claim today your part of the mantle and the ministry of Jesus Christ. Trust Him. Trust His calling for you in your life by reaching out and by serving others. May God bless you. You can connect with the GMBA on YouTube, all major podcast platforms, and Instagram. There are links in the description. Make sure to like and subscribe, leave a comment, and share this with someone you know. Thank you.